Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August 22nd, 2024. Let's talk about Shakur Stevenson signing with Matchroom. Let's also talk about Fabio Wardley signing with Queensberry. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be <coughs> a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, it didn't make sense at first. Right? You heard that Shakur Stevenson had signed to fight Joe Cordina. And you thought, wow, what's the point of this? Right? Cordina was stopped earlier this year. Cordina is not even a 135 pounder. If Shakur Stevenson is serious about wanting to be the best in the sport pound for pound, if he wants to be mentioned with people like Bevo, Crawford, Baturbiev, Benavides, Canelo, certainly he can do better than this. Did I miss Gervonta Davis? Did I miss in a way? Well, let's just put it this way. Now news breaks that Shakur Stevenson has signed with Match Room. <laughs> now it all makes sense, doesn't it? You know the way these negotiations go. The promoter says, look player, I want four fights. The fighter says, nah man, I, you know, four is a lot for what you're paying me. So then of course they reach an agreement. I'm just randomly picking four fights. Who knows what the terms of the deal actually are. But let's say it's four fights. The promoter says, you know what? I'll make that extra fight an easy fight. It'll help me afford the deal. You'll almost certainly be guaranteed the win. Right? So I need for people to look hard at this Stevenson Cordina fight where Stevenson by the way is going off as a 14 to 1 favorite right let's think through this situation Cordina lost to a southpaw who had seven KOs right Anthony Kakachi and of course Cordina lost that fight by stoppage and of course the fight was at 130 so here's a shocker. Who would have thought this one? Shakur Stevenson's a southpaw. Like Kakachi, Stevenson isn't that big of a puncher. Is it possible that Stevenson is going to get the stoppage here just like Kakachi, who had seven KOs, got the stoppage on Joe Cordina? Are the fans going to notice that the fight's at 135 and not 130 where Cordina just got knocked out. Right? So, for gamblers like us, here's the real story. What's the bet on this fight? Shakur Stevenson has a reputation he needs to protect. Right? Boxing fans are starting to get restless with him, aren't they? Right? They see him jumping back. They see fighters in the pocket with him. They're not even running. And the fight's going the distance. Right? I believe Stevenson got this fight, which to me is a gimme. This is the boxing equivalent of a basketball layup. He got this fight to remind the fans that he has some pop. If a southpaw landing a lot of left hooks, look at the film, right? I have the highlights in my favorites folder here online right now. If a southpaw landing a lot of left hooks on Joe Cordina was able to stop Cordina this year, then Stevenson, who has to show everyone that he's worth the money, needs to be able to at least match Anthony Kakachi's performance, doesn't he? The bet I like in this fight is Stevenson by stoppage, right? Understand, Stevenson has not gotten a stoppage in a while. This is the 
fighter promoter getting together to agree on an event that's tailor made for just that. I like Stevenson by stoppage. It's an unhedged play. You didn't think this brother was going to spend 14 to 1 on this fight, did you? I like Stevenson by stoppage. I'll have a link to the odds. Just understand it's early right now. Right? I'm making this video on August 22nd, 2024. That link's going to continue to work. It's a link to Odds Checker, an excellent odd site. If you're watching this video in late September, just understand the odds may have changed materially. Let's talk about a signing I'm even more bullish on. Right, folks, you've heard me say several times, this is the deepest heavyweight division I have seen in my life. Right? I know every era has their group of heavyweights. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm sure guys from the 70s would say, are you kidding? Ali, Foreman, Fraser, Quarry, Shavers, Norton, later 70s, Cooney, Jimmy Young, throw him in there, right? They're going to say, hey, man, what about that era? Right? Okay. Fair enough. Folks, you have many more names than that right now, and one of them is Fabio Wardley. Now, I've talked about this in the past. No one buys it, and that's fine. <laughs> I always get some rough statements in the comment section on this. But the flaws make the diamond. Right? Also, high variance is what it is. As I've mentioned before, I'm not saying Nolan Ryan was the best pitcher in Major League history. But there were days, plural, when he was unhittable. Right? Where you were watching the game and you weren't even thinking about whether Nolan's team would win the game. You were thinking about whether the other team was even going to get a hit on him. Now, Fabio Wardley has more upside. This will sound bizarre, right? Wardley's a wild card. He has more upside. He's a born puncher. He has more upside than most of the guys in the heavyweight division because he's not a technician. Folks, I believe it's almost impossible to prepare for him. You don't quite know what he's going to do. Right? A Fraser Clark. Not the biggest puncher. He's older than Fabio Wardley. He's a technician. Right? A Fraser Clark might look at a guy, look at his feet, see his feet too close together, and will think like a technician thinks. He'll say, hey, his feet are too close together. This guy can't get off power shots. Right? A Fraser Clark might look at a guy and might realize that the guy doesn't double up his jab. He'll make a mental note of that. So the first time he sees the jab, after reaching that conclusion, he'll counter. He'll jump in. Right? Understand who technicians are. They're studying you. They're figuring you out. They're trying to crack your code. Right? They'll come in. They'll throw punches to your right side. You have them blocked. Then they'll throw punches to your left side. You have the left up top block. Oh, you don't have the left to the body block. Think about the inventory Martin Bacoli just took on Jared Anderson. He's in the ring with Anderson. Then he figures out, hey, this guy doesn't defend himself <laughs> against uppercuts. Right, folks, that's like having the key to the guy's door. Now, you and I know that's not the way. Fabio Wardley thinks. Right? You're watching a Wardley fight and it's crazy. Right? His feet are together. He can still throw power shots. Right? I saw him against Nathan Gorman. He was getting roughed up in that fight. We forget because knockouts cause amnesia. You can set your watch to when Fabio Wardley's nose starts bleeding. Folks, it happens in every fight. Just food for thought. He says he has scar tissue in the nose. Just understand, <laughs> this is the guy 
This is the guy who's getting hit in the nose every fight. Right? Your nose just doesn't start bleeding. No, he's getting hit in the nose every fight. Because this isn't the guy who intuitively knows how to tuck his head. Of course, if you look closely at him, you realize he's unbeaten. That Fraser Clark fight, one of the guys got a knockdown in that fight. It was Fabio Wardley. He was getting spanked by Gorman. Then suddenly the fight changed. This is what being a blessed puncher does for you. <laughs> suddenly Wardley starts landing some big shots. Then you realize Wardley unpredictable. Wild card. This is like having a wild stallion around some trained horses. He's a wild card. One wonders what happens if he's in the ring with, let's say, an Usyk. Not the biggest heavyweight, right? Skilled. Technician. Can be there with Anthony Joshua and somehow find a way not to get hit hard that much in two fights, 24 rounds. Right? This is a guy who, you know, is in with Tyson Fury and... Gets Fury over by the ropes, then drops Fury. But one wonders what happens if he's in with uh, Fabio Wardley. Where you can't predict what he's going to do. Where you're running through some mental checklist. And the guy's inconsistent. He's not following a script. You don't watch a Wardley fight. Particularly the early rounds of one, thinking, oh, what strategy is he going to have here? <laughs> it's like, you know, that Tyson Fury, Usyk fight's really a chess match. You showed up early in that fight to think, you know, what's the strategy going to be? How are these guys going to approach it? Is Fury, a bigger man, going to try to impose himself on former cruiserweight Usyk? Right? Is Usyk going to be on his back foot? You have a long list of these questions. Right? Is Fury going to try to land a jab on a southpaw who's hard to hit with a jab? Right? Then you notice Fury solved the puzzle a bit. Starts throwing jabs to the body. Right? You're, you're discovering the strategy as the fight rolls out. With Fabio Wardley, folks, you're in a different place. You're watching that Fraser Clark fight. <laughs> And you are uncertain several rounds in what Wardley is going to do. Folks, that unpredictability is an asset. He's unbeaten for a reason. Right? I know that Fraser Clark fight went to a draw. I expect Fraser Clark to come out much better prepared. Right? Technicians have a learning curve. Right Over time, they start to figure things out. I expect Fraser Clark to go from being puzzled the first three rounds of the first fight to coming out with a game plan. Right, Knowing that Wardley's not going to be on his back foot, think about it, just the idea of Wardley on his back foot is too strange to even fantasize about. You know Wardley's going to be either standing still or on his front foot. The one constant you know, besides the fact that Wardley's nose is going to bleed, is that Wardley's going to be throwing big shots with both hands. Right now, he's signed to Queensberry. I wouldn't have taken the Fraser Clark rematch. You know, if I'm Wardley, my attitude's going to be, hey, no one can duplicate me. I only want to fight guys one time. Right? Unless, of course, you're wearing a belt. Right? If it's a championship fight and I'm getting a championship payday, okay, okay, I'll fight you a couple times. But other than that, I wouldn't take the risk, particularly not with Fraser Clark. Right? He is. But understand, if he gets by Fraser Clark, isn't the sky the limit? Ask yourself, and I'm serious about this, how many right hands did Daniel Dubois get hit with in that Philippe Ergovic fight? Several. Now, I think the AJ crowd has the mindset of Dubois can't stand up to that type of beating from AJ. 
right? The big question in the AJ fight, and it's a huge question, is whether AJ is going to feel comfortable enough early to throw the number of right hands that Ergovic threw on Daniel Dubois, right? That's the big question. Well, all I could say is Dubois against Fabio Wardley, folks, that's a spectacular fight. Because understand, Fabio Wardley is going to open up. Right? Fabio Wardley would land huge shots on Daniel Dubois, who, let's face it, is not defensively mindful. Right? Dubois is getting hit with shots. Right? A blessed puncher like a Fabio Wardley is always only one shot away from winning any fight he's in. Right? Understand, Fabio Wardley right now is very close to the heavyweight championship. Right? He gives great fights. Promoters love to have him on their cards because you know it's going to be an exciting fight. You understand, there's going to be intrigue. Right? I'd love to see Fabio Wardley against, in my dreams, Arthur Perturbiev. Because I know Paterbiev's going to come across the ring and go for a knockout. And I know Fabio Wardley is going to step right back with big shots. That's who he is. Right? So, to me, there's the heavyweight championship. And then there's everything else. Right? There's one thrown in boxing. I don't even buy the idea, by the way, <laughs> that the pound-for-pound pound mythical title equals the heavyweight title, right? I mean, there's some heavyweights who have won titles who have had problems staying in shape. But yet you know who they are, right? If you were alive in the 1990s, you vividly remember Riddick Bowe. Right? You might not remember who was the best pound for pound back then, right? So, Queensberry, before the Fraser Clark fight, signs Fabio Wardley. There are going to be some nights where Wardley looks amateurish. Let's be real. I thought Fraser Clark made him look amateurish in some of those rounds. No question about it, right? You could go around and ask people who looked more skilled, Fraser Clark or Fabio Wardley. And I'm guessing what seven, eight out of ten are going to say Fraser Clark looked more technical, looked more skilled. Right? Fabio Wardley is the guy who got the knockdown in the fight. Right? Understand, this is boxing. You know, if a guy is winning, to all of the people who are critics of Deontay Wilder, when a guy is winning and has a huge knockout ratio and is winning championship fights, we have a word for a guy like that. You call him champ. Right, Fabio Wardley, let's just say there are a lot of heavyweights who I think have more technical know-how than Fabio Wardley. Wardley is not a guy I would want fighting any of them if I were in their corner. This guy is simply too dangerous. Right, Frank Warren, who went up against Matchroom, and was undefeated on that card. Let's remember that. That's been forgotten. Folks, that happened just a few months ago. Right? He's added a high variance heavyweight. Right? I'm not saying I look at Fabio Wardley and I think of Usyk. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is if Usyk were to fight Fabio Wardley, he'd probably have a harder time than he had against Daniel Dubois. Pay attention to unpredictable, high-variance athletes in general, right? They can pull upsets. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.